from the University of Kansas, you're watching KUJH News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Sierra Upton with your Friday News. It's an exciting time for KU basketball fans. Today marked the groundbreaking of the much anticipated DeBruce Center. The center will be connected to Allen Fieldhouse through the second floor concourse. It will house James Naismith's original rules of basketball. It will also provide a student activity center for men's and women's basketball teams. KU women's head basketball coach Bonnie Henriksen shared her thoughts on the anticipation of the new center. I think campus-wide there's a lot of excitement and there should be. I mean, certainly on, on my end on a day-to-day -day basis, the, the excitement for our players to have a first-class dining facility and then our ability to use that in recruiting as well. The DeBruce Center was named after its donors, Paul and Catherine DeBruce. Police arrested Lawrence resident Michael Allen Hetrick on suspicion of child abuse Thursday. The incident was reported to the Lawrence Police Department and the Kansas Department of Children and Families. Hetrick was interviewed by police before the arrest. The victim, described as an elementary-aged female, was interviewed by police and taken to the hospital. She's currently in protective custody, and Hetrick remains in jail with no bond set. The state Senate approved a new budget deal that will offer state employees one-time bonuses instead of raises. The bonus would be $250 for state employees, totaling $11 million. This comes just two days after Moody's Investor Services downgraded the state's bond rating due to a slower economic recovery compared to other states. The lower rating could mean higher interest loan rates for state projects. The House is expected to vote on the budget this afternoon. The Jayhawkers Coalition has filed a complaint with the Court of Appeals asking for the student Senate election results to be overturned. Jayhawker says Grow KU did not receive a plurality of the votes cast in the election. Therefore, the Court of Appeals should overturn the Elections Commission decision to certify the results. According to the unofficial election results, Jayhawker's presidential ticket received over 61% of the vote. Grow KU received about 32% of the vote. Jayhawkers argues the will of the students is more important than its disqualification. They voted for us. They exercised their franchise. The will of the students was heard and it was for us. I think that the, a vote is more powerful than arbitrary rules and regulations. Elections Commission Chair Jake Rapp says the plurality argument was not presented to the Elections Commission at its hearing on Tuesday. He says votes for Jayhawkers were valid and that they allowed students to participate in the election but they do not change the outcome of the results. Since they were cast for disqualified candidates, the results for those candidates were not included in our unofficial results or in the certified results. Jayhawkers plans to continue appealing the decision, even possibly taking it outside the university. Highly touted recruit Devontae Graham announced on Twitter that he will be joining the Jayhawks next season. Earlier today, the prep point guard tweeted out, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. KU sophomore Wayne Selden reached out to Graham and welcomed him to the team. KU Athletics received his paperwork this afternoon. The news comes just one day after junior point guard Devere Tharp said he wouldn't return for his senior season. According to KU Athletics, Tharp will be looking for a school closer to home to focus on his family. Still to come on KUJH News, see what new construction projects can potentially affect your area. This and more after the break. Welcome back. The academic year is almost over, which means construction may affect those of you who stay in Lawrence this summer. Workers will jump into the second phase of the Jayhawk Boulevard reconstruction project the day after graduation. Starting May 19th, access to the KU campus will be blocked at each of the four traffic booths. Phase two will extend from Poplar Lane between Snow and Strong Halls through the intersection at Sunflower Road and Jayhawk Boulevard. Here's a photo of what Jayhawk Boulevard will look like after the reconstruction is finished. The next two phases will extend into the summer of 2015 and end in the summer of 2016. Detailed information about detours and alternate routes will be available at maps.ku.edu by clicking on the construction's label. Welcome to Lawrence, the most expensive place to live in Kansas. A new study also shows Lawrence residents' income is lower compared to Kansas communities around the same size. This leads to the problem of high home costs and apartment rentals, coupled with low wages. The city doesn't see it as a big problem. And so they're willing to pay a little bit more to live in a community where there's actually a, 
viable downtown and an exciting you know, university environment. And Deaver also says students are willing to pay higher costs for housing to be able to close to campus. The city wants to eventually lower the cost of living. And now let's take a look at, our, at tomorrow's weather. It's going to be a warm weekend. The high tomorrow is 81. In the morning, it's going to be a chilly start with about 50 degrees. It's going to, be, going to start out partly cloudy with calm winds. Into noon, temperatures are going to pick up to 70. The sun is going to come out, and it's going to be a little breezy. And into the evening, temperatures will pick up even more to 78, and no chance of rain throughout the day. On Sunday, it's going to be a hot day, high of 91 sunny throughout the day but the good news is you're going to see some winds up to 14 miles per hour and a small chance for rain on monday the high is 86 you're going to see winds up to 10 miles per hour and there's going to be no chance for rain and that does it for our friday news for the latest news you can visit kansan.com for kjh news i'm sierra upton have a good night